Hello, you are on the lifeboat. It's Captain Calhoun here. How is everybody today on this casual Saturday? Heck yeah, look at all you beautiful people in the chat. Let's do a little roll call, shall we? I'm gonna scroll to the top, look how far away it is, oh my. All right, Sweet Tea, Charlie Mullins, Dangerous Journeyman, good to see you. Ben Bacon Bits, Scooby Lee, Jason P, J9, my people are here. Lord Kiss Freak, always a pleasure, my guy. Are you? Still haven't gotten that pronunciation from you. I'm sorry if I said that wrong again. The real too scummy. Tina, Shannon Smith, Alan Ballantyne, my main man, Lacey Silver. Good to see everybody. I hope everyone's Saturday's treating them well. Um, I know mine is. I was answering comments and emails today and just had this moment where I was overwhelmed with emotion. I was like crying and laughing at the same time. And uh, I couldn't find um, the bottom of the comments. It was pretty, it was quite the moment. I had to call my mom and tell her about it. Um, so thank you for everybody that hung out and, uh, and, 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 you know, said stuff in the comments. I appreciate every single one of you. Valerie 102, good to see you. Mile High Hokey. Joanne Rice, the new strut. No, the newest nut, pardon me. Scrolling too fast there, eh? Seventh Sun, good to see you. Tara Smiling, CBC. Lumen, Lynn Sanity. Wow, it's a party in here, huh? Layla Bradley. I'll tell you about my mom sometime, but not today. <clears throat> Sandy Wandy. All right. All right, crew. If I missed you, I'm sorry. If I see you, I'll shout you out. Debbie P. Sahuaro Christmas. Janet G. I'm so glad everybody showed up. And from Massachusetts. So I thought we'd be, uh, you know, if we were casual this morning, I thought we would be even more casual uh, this evening. You know, hence the shirt. This is my casual, casual boat shirt. One of my favorites. I had to uh, dig Lord Kiss Freak out of the junk folder earlier today. Um, there was actually a couple um, from Lord Kiss Freak in there. They had been piling up. I don't know why that is. Some I, I actually found a few emails or a few emailers, I should say, um, that always get sent to the junk email. So if you've been sending emails and they haven't been getting responded to, it might be because... We never check the junk, but I am now checking the junk and I will um, see if I can fix that so that I don't have to. Um, Sarita, good to see you. Zenwen, Noise Opera, Sunrise Dawn. Heck yeah. All right, so I'm sure you all saw the thumbnail and the title. Two Scovilles for the price of none. Two Scovilles, one boat. What could go wrong? But y'all are wondering who that Scoville is. I wonder if it works. I wonder if it's as cool when I do that. <laughs> but uh, I'll give you I'll give you two guesses, and the first one doesn't count. And I'm gonna bring in I'm gonna bring him in. Ta da! <laughs> Heck yeah! Thanks. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Uncle Johnny. Thanks for having me aboard. Dude, I'm Appreciate so happy you're here. It. I am too. We're gonna Sporting have a, a beautiful shirt, very festive. I love it. Yeah, we're gonna do good stuff here. I'm glad you Jenkins. Said it was casual Saturday because I had a tie on about 15 minutes ago. I took it off when I heard you say that. <laughs> yeah, we have none of that here. It's not tie day for sure. Nobody Hopefully, not for a very long time. Sherry Lovren, good to see you. Well, what do you guys think? Can we have Johnny on? I don't think anyone's too upset about it. I'm just yeah, probably managed. not. Probably see not. everybody. Yeah, so I thought we would just kind of hang out, um, maybe ask some questions, answer some questions, kind of fart around, tell some jokes, you know. We got Seventh Son in the house. Dad jokes for days. Um, I'm looking for – I have questions written down. I don't know where they went. Valentine, you know better, bro. Everybody is very kind. Thank you. 
the squirrel, squirrel whisper. I have, I, you know what I did? I'm, I was supposed to be leaving today to go uh, out of town to work on this book and uh, death in the family of my agent. So it's delayed a little bit. So um, <clears throat> I'm, what I'm doing is I'm loading up on cat videos. So I'm going to be out of town for a while. I've got a stockpile of shorts that I'm going to throw up. Heck yeah. Like people that are like digging the, I have a very funny one that happened today. Can't wait to upload it. Uh, the commercial, who asked that? That's a great question. Hi, uh, who asked about the commercial? Someone said, how did the commercial go? Uh, that was Mischief Manage. The commercial was great. Uh, Tommy and I, uh, I guess I can tell you, we went to, to uh, Church's Chicken and uh, filmed it there. It was fun. Got back and uploaded the video and uh, sent it to Church's Chicken to have them approve it. But I think they will, so. Um, yeah, it's a trip. Just uh, some, reading some of the comments. I never thought ever that Spanx and I'd be doing a live stream together. You know, I uh, I look forward to the day that we can sit next to each other and eat some peppers. I tell you what, you it's know? coming soon. In fact, I have uh, on good authority that there is some. When the, next week, I'll have peppers. Here's the problem, though. I'm going to be out of town. Though. I'll hey, be out we'll of town for like a month. We got the rest of our lives ahead of us, so I'm sure we'll get yep. to it. And um, uh, in May, my daughter, daughter Scoville, graduates pre-med, so I'll be wearing a uh, shirt and tie that day. Wow, good for her! Congratulations. W wicked proud of her. Three point eight eight or uh, three point eight five grade point average. Good stock, Smoking. you know. <laughs> Listen, she's she, I, forget the good stock. Let me tell you something. She's so much smarter than I am. She's amazing. Heck yeah. Very proud of her. And that's your daughter, right? My cousin? Yep. Yep. Your cousin. Wasn't, exactly. Wasn't she uh, a, quite the uh, decorated diver? She was a wildly decorated diver. She got a full four-year scholarship, daughter, daughter Scoville did. Um, you know what I did the other day? I did a video where I mentioned whipping her in Monopoly. And in the middle of the video, I said her name. Oh. I like, so I had to stop and start the whole video over again. It's pretty fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, she she got she was a very decorated diver. And uh, in fact, four years ago, four or five years ago, her diving coach, who was in the Olympics, we were I was watching her dive one day and the coach took her mom and I aside and said she can go as far as she really wants to. If she wants to be in the Olympics, I'll help her get there if it's what she wants. She didn't want it. She well, had a good time. She's she hurt him, uh, injured her back, so she can't dive anymore. But now oh. she's gotten into ballet, which is crazy because she says it's harder, it's more intense and harder workouts than diving. I respect the ballet so much. Have you ever been to the ballet? Uh, not physically. I've seen some ballet. I've never been to the ballet though, but I've watched you know some performances. It's amazing. I, it's, yeah, they're they're you know. I enjoy. Let me tell you something, the precision and the dedication they have, it's like with form and everything else, it's it's only it's like figure skating without the skates. Oh, for sure. And I mean, that does seem to make it harder, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, she, she's an animal. Listen, she's got, I think she's probably the most like me of my kids. She, when she, she was originally a swimmer. I don't know if you remember that, Spanx. She was a swimmer and she was doing really, really well at it. And her mom, uh, we were doing, we were divorced already and I was about to have my week with the kids. And she said, you got to talk to your daughter. I said, why? She goes, she wants to quit swimming. So I'm like, you know, quit's a dirty word. We don't quit stuff. Well, yeah. we quit, quit, I quit stuff. <laughs> five, five years ago, I quit stuff. You know, I quit drinking and things like that, but we don't like quitting is a bad thing. Like when you make a commitment to something. So I called her. I said, why do you want to quit? She goes, I want to dive instead. And I said, why? She goes, cause I'll never get hurt swimming. Nice. That was a serious. I'm like, nice. She liked the danger of it. She did, you know, and she, she earned it though. I was, we were at a, we were at a, uh, once I was at a, just a diving practice and then she was on the 10 meter platform and I was sitting, her mom was in, in one row up, uh, watching, we're watching her dive and she was, uh, on the end of the board going off backwards. And I don't remember the dive she was doing, but she planked. I mean, she planked flat. Like she almost didn't go underwater. She hit so flat. And when you uh, fall from that height, when you hit divers get this thing called an X-ray 
and behind on the on behind she landed on her back so when she climbed out everywhere on her back her back was so red but everywhere she like her arms here were white the back of her legs there's a white line where the bones are and they call it an x-ray it's the weirdest looking thing and i'd never seen one before i'd heard about it but i'd never seen one and she planked and you could, there was like probably 40 or 50 parents you know all together watching and you could hear this oh and it was horrible and her mom went to run to her i said hey sit down we're, we're not going to do this and she got out of the pool i was just like oh it was brutal i wanted to help her but it was one of those moments so she stood there she kept her back to everybody i knew she was crying and she uh she went to the uh climbed back up the ladder i was like oh my god went to the edge of the and did it again like nobody went after her she planked wow. got back up and did it again and then nailed it the second time i was just like oh my Wow. That was, yeah, that's crazy. So I don't know, ballet, it's like very disciplined. It's, yeah, I don't think there's the danger factor, but it's wickedly disciplined. And she digs that. Well, what you, you do know, is the, discipline. The whole fire thing, the discipline you have to have with that. It's or a dangerous you'll kill way somebody, You'll kill a, 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 somebody watching or hurt, you know, somebody working with you or yourself. Dude, I've seen some very scary things happen. Um, and I've heard some stories too. I remember one time. I've seen that a few I, videos. One time I wasn't present. I don't know what I was up to this night, but my crew lit a car on fire. Um, not on purpose. I mean, uh, yeah. but and it happened to be the the venue owner's car. <sighs> no one was hurt in the in the mistaking of that performance. But, Do you have uh, a video? No, no. And that really uh, that was that was probably the worst thing that could have happened to us at that time. And it sowed the um, seeds of dissension among the crew and. Um, wasn't very really good for our reputation, but we bounced back. It's pretty and intense. I've watched a video, uh, a fire show, and I think it, I don't know why it had that luau feel. I just want to say it was in Hawaii. What do I know? It may not have been, it may have been in Hoboken, but it looked like Hawaii to me. And this, it's a night, and the fires went around, and something, it, you know, it got away from one of them. It, it was an accident, and fire flew off, and pretty cool video. I'm sorry, I missed that. I can sound out. Uh, I, I've seen a uh, a fire thing. I think it was in uh, Hawaii where, that went off the rails, and and there was an accident where, you know, fire got Dude. away from them. Yeah, they have Scary. these um, things called poi, and it's basically like a, a ball of wick. So it's like a fireball on the end of a string, and people swing them around, usually two at once. And they have these really big wicks called death stars, and they're about they're about this big. And then I watched this guy. Um, they were brand new. You can tell when they've never been used because when you burn them, they turn a little black from the soot. So they were fresh. They were still that like yellow Kevlar color. And uh, I watched him do this huge drippy dip in the fuel, went and lit him on fire. And the first move he did was this one where you have your hands in the middle and the strings are going like this. So it's like a, a bicycle wheel in front of you. Right. And just drenched himself from crotch to hairline on fire. Um, I've seen some really scary Stop, stuff. Stop, drop, and roll, baby. That's we scary. Tackled no, them. Fire, fire, we tackled them. Every, fire gives me the willies. Every year at Christmas time, they show you like how fast a house can catch on fire with a Christmas tree. And when you watch a house, uh, like the fire start, it, that fire is alive, man. That thing is, it's spooky. It gives me the and willies, man. Totally part of the fun. I have been getting itchy. It's been a long time since I spun. Um, I've been actually throwing the stick around in the living room, just not on fire. So I'm going to have to. Get my well, I want to see you soon. do the Spanx has these uh, nunchucks that you set on fire. And I didn't know they even did that. I didn't know that was a thing. My I told you the story. My roommate freshman year, we had nunchucks and he was playing around the room. There's like three of us in the room and he hit himself on top of the head, like right on top of the head. And I didn't even think it was real at first. It didn't sound it. It sounded like you took two baseball bats and hit them together. Yeah, and they're, just, they are serious. He just I collapsed, actually, went straight down. I have a pair over here if you guys want a demonstration. <laughs> demonstration specs yeah light them on fire that'd be good for the apartment they'll be they'll be knocking on your door in five minutes you didn't realize that they were watching you right yeah for real they're There's, on the boat man yeah they they're that would be hilarious if they were they know they know who we are we told them so shout out to uh to my apartment complex let me tell you something if you know many people in your apartment's complex went live today at some point or are going live or posting something it's guarantee just, it's happening for sure. It's um, every, it's an epidemic. I can't wait to get in the pool. We have a we have multiple pools over here. 
You know what? I had a pool in the apartment I lived at in Fort Mill. Never went in it once. Came close. Almost did one day, but didn't. It's different when it's like your own pool versus a public pool. I don't know why. There's more to Yeah, consider. I got there. The, I, the day I was going to go out, I we pulled in. And there was like nobody in the pool. It was hotter than blazes. It was so hot. I was like, you know what? Today's the day I'm going. And I went upstairs, changed my clothes, put bathing suit on, came down. By the time I got out, it was like they, uh, you know, it was like a football team in the in the pool. There was like tons of people in the pool cooking out. It was like I was getting pranked or something. I didn't believe how fast it filled up. So I was like, eh. Sometimes when it's popular, it's cool, but sometimes it's too much. I tell you what. I remember you know what I went to. to we need ahead. to jump off the roof here in this house into the pool. I cannot believe we have not done that on video yet. That is I don't a think ridiculous it's, disappointment. I don't think it's deep enough. Oh, it's deep enough. I'll, 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 I'll jump off right after you. I'll follow you. Yeah, here's the thing. You got about you an eight foot it. section of you got about an eight foot section of uh, cement that you got to clear, but it's only I'm, eight feet, and you got you're off it. the ground by eight feet. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm good so for it. So if you just got to get a good couple, good couple good steps, carry the cement. Now, if you don't carry the cement, there's your viral video. Break it up. You can make yeah. three or four shorts out of it. There you go. Yeah, I think the most likely way to screw that up is to slip on one of your one one or two steps. Here's the deal, fall. man. We are in an age where every you, you can go online. If you the, the thing about algorithms are weird. Click on one of those, and then that's all they're going to give you. Are people getting hurt? It's like there's a thought, you know. Pools people are love scary, watching man. people get hurt. I don't know why that is, but I, I, man, I don't. I, I I don't. You know, burning people like on fire, like not like with, with spicy stuff. I'll watch that all day. I'll watch that all day. And it's all those are almost more fun when someone gets in over their head and they don't realize they bite off way more than they can chew. I'll watch those. Like if you want to find, go to uh, here on YouTube, just type in tube of terror gone wrong. <laughs> I've you seen can those. have <laughs> hours and hours and hours of fun uh, watching that. It's hilarious. But like you see these skateboard things, like, like you, you, you're like, oh, that guy didn't walk away from that. You know what I mean? I don't like them when people are getting really hurt. Because too often that's me. I was the guy. You know, it was before the cameras were rolling, but that was me all the time. That's funny. You had to work your way up, huh? You did. You weren't born the pro. Well, your dad and I, man, we grew up in a really interesting time. Like all the this. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stupid stuff we've done that's out there on video, but like there was. It, thank the Lord, there was no video cameras, or what was it like? Everybody didn't have one in their pocket when he and I were young because. I can't even imagine. You I feel like I mean? for the first half of my life, there weren't cameras everywhere, but somewhere along the way they appeared. Boy, now it's really funny. Little kids, every little kid, by the time they're two years old, it has more pictures taken of them than Marilyn Monroe did before she checked out. I mean, kids are getting, you know what I mean? There's just constantly, at every step of the way, there's a camera. I'm wondering, like, yeah, psychologically, what is the effect of that on kids? Are we raising, like, a generation of kids that just, like, narcissistic children? Where We're it's, not like, going to know until all they grow about up. Them? You, you know? don't put a camera, no one pointed a camera. I mean, just, like, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. That was kind of it. Birthdays. It's, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when those children become adults, because there is going to be a difference. There is going to be a trend. There is with every generation, right? And that generation happens to be defined by the presence and abundance of technology. So we'll see. What, what scares me is the, uh, everybody was wearing a mask. Have you ever, yeah. read, have you ever read, have you ever read how important face faces are to infants? Very important. I have read that. Holy crap. And I mean, all these babies are always around with all these people. They can't really see. I, I, I thought about that so many times. Like, what is that doing to a little money? Gives me the willies, man. We got to talk I about mean, something it's different. Definitely, Spanks, yeah, what was the uh, last concert well, here, you saw, dude? What was the last concert you saw? The last one I saw was Super Bowl. My, uh, my buddy's funk band I saw right before I left Salt Lake City. By the way, I love that lid. Oh, you can't see. It's pretty sweet, right? It's a it does great chapeau, dude. Kind of fits over the headphones, but not really. If the wind were to just blow a little, it would fly Can off. Can I tell you something? If I, if I had that here, you could not. I, there's no way I'm not wearing that. That's awesome. I'll get you one. I'll, uh, just, I just got to hit up my buddy Brandon. He'll, uh, he'll send one out. Yeah. Bizzle is in the chat. Man, that's one of my favorite Ooh. dudes like, on the planet. Hi, Bizzle. I love you, dude. Duchess Diana, good to see you. Wharton Thistle. Uh, Miss Sunrise Dawn asked, 
uh, will she be getting her wrench tonight? It may be later tonight. I just am doing some restructuring, and a as I do that, I'm going to add you in there. All right? Hi, Zelda. Uh, I appreciate Bam. your patience. All my friends are here. I have, like, so much to do. I'm just going to do Gilgan one thing Gilgan wants his hat back, says Shannon Smith. <laughs> do you know what? You know what's funny about Gilgan? Let's talk about that for a minute. Do you realize right. out there, I don't care what show you want to find. It doesn't matter. Leave it to Beaver. You name it. The Kale's Navy. I don't care how far back you want to go. Good luck finding Gilligan's Island anywhere out there. You can find them, but they're going to make you buy them. You cannot. They are not out there. It's crazy. I grew up on that. That was like a great show when I was a kid. That was before my time, I think. Man, your dad and I, there was, when I, there was a period of time where it, my dad... Papa Scoville would come home every day at the same time. And we'd watch uh, Gilligan's Island. And right after Gilligan's Island was Dark Shadows, man. Barnabas Collins. And when you're, it's Barnabas. funny. When you get old, when you're, when you're my age, it's like, cool show, man. It's like, I, it was funny. You're six or you're eight. I got news for you, man. Barnabas Collins is a terrifying dude. I remember Mama Scoville. Oh, my God. I remember Mama Scoville being in the kitchen. And she'd be like, don't watch Dark Shadows. <laughs> We'd be like, they're glued to the TV, like in stark horror. Yeah, man, it was a vampire. It was a vampire. Oh, okay. It was like, a, it was okay. like a vampire soap opera. It was a, you, gotta, you gotta Google it. It's, it's, yeah, I'll tell you what, it was horrible. Barnabas it, it, Collins. It, listen, it was so bad, it was delicious. It was one of those kinds of things. But like I haven't a good seen old train wreck. Yeah, I haven't seen a, a concert in a long time. I was about to ask you that question. You know what um, it was? A it was Boy George, chat. Howard Jones. I can't remember who the third one in the lineup was. How was recently like, did you see Boy George? Right? It was How uh, recent? Uh, four years ago. Funny crazy, enough. Right? right to, when, you, when we were back in Reno, if you were standing in Papa Scoville's home and you're on the front steps, if you look to the right, the house across the street on the right, the woman who lived in that house, she says to me one day, she was, you want to go, I got an extra ticket. You want to see Boy George? I said, yes. She didn't need to sell me on that at all. But like, 80s, Boy George, Howard Jones, and there was one other. I can't remember who the third one was. But anyway, I was like, I'm all over it. She, as we're going, she tells me this story. When she was 16 years old, her dad had something to do with uh, with uh, Boston, the, the uh, Madison Square Garden, excuse me, Madison Square Garden. And I don't know what he did, but it's some promotional deal. And then on her 16th birthday, they, her dad had a limo, come pick them all up. They went to Madison Square Garden. Backstage, she met the Beatles on her 16th birthday. And Paul what? McCartney, Paul McCartney kissed her hand. What? I said, I said how come you have, you've washed it? What's the deal with that? that it made me wonder when she told hand. the story. My first thought was, like, how many times has she told that story? She's older than I am, you know what I mean? So she's probably told the story a lot, but it was still a great story. I was like, you're kidding me. Paul so McCartney cool. kissed your hand. Imagine being a 16-year-old girl, bro. That's like, well, in the 80s, that's like, uh, since you're kind of rocking the Axl Rose look, that's like Axl Rose kissing your hand backstage on your 16th birthday. That's pretty right? cool. I gotta say. Oh, it's epic. epic. Stuff that dreams are made of. Yeah, but that was a great show. That was such a good show. I really, I had such a good time with that one. Yeah, we'll have to get you a super bubble hat. We have um, a question from Layla Bradley. Uh oh. She asks, uh, What's your favorite memory we share? Uh, I don't you know first. what his would be, would be, but he was, Spanks was just very, very funny. There's a couple of really great ones that I have. <laughs> I remember once, uh, uh, there's a couple of good ones. Why did when you were really, I don't know how old you, you maybe four. We went somewhere and got you a, a, a like a what a freeze, one of the uh, ice slushy, slushy. Slurpee. It was a slushy, a slushy, and frozen drinks. You know, and you, I don't know what color it was or what flavor it was, but your dad was you just wanted it so bad. And your dad's like, "Listen, Spanks, don't drink it too fast. It's going to give you a headache. Go slow. Pace yourself, dude." So he handed you this thing, and you it had this try. You went. And before you could pull the straw out of your mouth, you were <laughs> sucking on that thing so hard, you got like three or four mouthfuls down. And we got the straw out of your mouth. It was like a, a popping sound practically. You were like a like a hungry animal. 
And then like literally 60 seconds later, you went, ah! you started crying. Your dad grabs you and rubs your head. And then like, but here's the funny part, like five minutes later, you're like, you did that two or three times. So that was hilarious. <laughs> but uh, another really funny one was, this is a funny one, man. Oh, ta- your dad and I were working together and we were driving, we had Porsches and your dad's was uh, red. Mine was white. They're identical. And we went to church one day and it was after church. We went after, we all went to Sister Scoville's house. <laughs> I can't believe you were so bad, Spanks. We were, we were at Sister Scoville's house for a cookout, and we were leaving. We're driving down, and your 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 dad's in front of me, so we're driving down the hill. You know, remember that huge the access road in Reno, that huge hill. All right, so we're driving down. I, I see a sneaker fly out the window. I'm like, oh no! Like a couple seconds later, another sneaker flies out the window. Your dad pulls over. I pull around him. I keep going home. I called you, Dad. Like, I'll t- talk to you later. You were throwing <laughs> stuff out the back. You drove it. If, if there was a window open, you were going to chuck it out the window. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. That was so funny. But I remember that. We laughed for that one for a long, long time. That was funny. Oh. And, and it wasn't just that. There was like a hat. There was a f- several things. It wasn't just a couple shoes. It was a bunch of stuff you were unloading as we were driving down. I was hell on wheels. Oh. What was your funny memory? I remember one time my dad um, was, I'm pretty sure, letting me drive the Porsche. Um, I must have been like five years old or six years old. I don't know how old I was. I have no idea how old I was, but I was sitting on a phone book or something of that nature. And my dad must have been controlling the gas or something. I feel like there's no way I could possibly do everything. But I was driving the car. I was I was steering. And then all of a sudden, here you come in oncoming traffic, like on the other side of the road. And we like uh, kind of made eye contact. And I think I waved. And then my dad was like, don't do that. Don't do that. Keep driving. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you ignore imagine, him, you ignore explain, him. If, if we got pulled. If, yeah, that's Tommy. Oh, I was going like 10 miles an hour in the neighborhood. It was like on our street or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was, was a neighborhood drive. It wasn't like he was like on the freeway or anything. Oh, that's it funny. was definitely a stick shift. Yeah, that was a. I missed that car. God, that car was fun. You know, the funny thing is, there are grocery getters now with four doors. You can put four people in and a trunk full of, car, of groceries that'll go zero to 60 faster than a Ferrari. But back in the day, those were really quick cars, man. Porsches? They were fun. Oh, they were beautiful. I really missed them. I, mean, I still think they're pretty cool. Yeah, they were great. The phone books did used Lacey, to be huge. Lacey Silver says, I, I, I want to see Nickelback. Tickets are way too expensive. You know what? I only said something about that because I feel bad for Nickelback. I like Nickelback. I, I do too. And it's, here's the thing. I feel bad for them. They, they, they're like, they somewhat, I don't know how, I don't know where the origin, there's probably a way to track it down. But somewhere someone said, hey, we're all going to hate Nickelback. It bums me out. You know, they do a, uh, a version of Sad But True. Yeah, Metallica, totally. And totally. it is so hard and so edgy and so gnarly. Have you heard them do it? I don't know if I've heard that one, but dude, I love Nickelback. Silver dude, Side Up reminds me of those they're Porsche heavy. days. They are. Yeah. They can be. I they can really hit like emotional notes and stuff too. I know that like they're hated on, but whatever. I like them a lot. Yeah, I don't know why they, they, they got hated on so bad, but boy, they really did. You know, also, that happened to a long time ago. Um, who was the dude who sang uh, Whip It? Whip It Whip Good. Real Good. Who was that? 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 I'm an idiot. I'm not gonna be able to think of the band. Uh, I should have. I, now I'm going down the road. I'm not gonna be able to remember it. Um, I don't know where I was even going with that, but I would go see Nickelback in a New York minute. Like, oh yeah, I would go see Avril Lavigne in a New York minute. <laughs> you know or, what? Or um, Christina Aguilera and Espanol. You know Do you know who loved Christina Aguilera? You'll never believe it if I tell you. 
My dad? No. His dad. <laughs> Papa, Papa Scoville liked Christina oh. Aguilar. I, I feel like I, I, I give up. I mean, what's not to like? Can I tell you how cool uh, he was? Let me tell you something. One day I come home and he goes, he goes John, have you ever heard of uh, Joe Bonamassa? I said, no. He goes, I want you to listen to this. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. I didn't know what, you know, because at this point he's 80, right? Or seven, you know, 80 years old probably. And I said, all right, I'll listen to it. And he gets, he goes to YouTube and he pulls it up on his, uh, on his, I don't know what he pulled up on his laptop maybe. And it was um, Joe Bonamassa in, in uh, Royal Albert Hall in London. And I swear to you, I watched for like 10 seconds. I just looked at my dad. I'm like, we watched the entire, vid- the, the, the entire show. I, I was like, how did, first of all, number one, how'd you find him? Number two, you like this? I couldn't believe it. He turned me on to Joe Bonamassa. I am now like the most, the biggest Joe Bonamassa fan, but I didn't even know who he was until my dad turned me on. To him. He was amazing that way. You want to know how cool generational learning is? Um, now you're in that position and I'm in your position because right? I have no idea who, say that one more time, Joe Bonamassa. Joe Bonamassa. Bonamassa. Joe Bonamassa. Gonna... He's a blue. It's kind of a blues, just a monster tone. Just for you know, I don't know if you guys know this about Joe Bonamassa. Oh, dude, look at his face. He is the coolest guy in town. Let me tell you this. Google him when he was thirteen. He was on like the 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 Johnny Carson show when he was thirteen. All right, he was playing with with BB King before wow. he had a driver's license. And I'm telling you, when he was thirteen, he was just like. Look at him. Look how he has the same face as when he's 50. He hasn't changed at all. Yeah. And he's a nerd, dude. Listen, his father owned a music shop. He's just a prodigy, but he has this, he he calls it nerdville or something. He he has a, he's a guitar freak and he has a guitar collection that if you're a guitar guy, dude, you are, you and I would, you drool. And, but he doesn't just buy cool old guitars. Everyone has some mind blowing story. Like he bought it at a pawn shop, took the paint off and realized it was, you know, one of the rare, I mean, everything he does, but you got to check him out. He's, he's, a, he's a wild man. Very, very I, fun to see in concert, dude. I can't wait to go to a concert. I was thinking about going to one tonight, but I don't know if I'm going to rush over there after the vote. I don't know. I, I still playing? may just for Who's the culture. Around? It's a, a local metal band um, night. There's like going to be a bunch of local metal bands for five bucks. Really? Yeah, we should go down there. Come pick me up. Think about it. I'll, I'll order us a taxi. Um, we have a ton of questions, so I'm going to try and uh, hit right, a couple. Fire one off. This questions. one's for you from uh, the master of questions herself, Tara Smiling. Johnny, you work furiously on the laptop in the mornings. What are you doing on there? <laughs> uh, okay, good question. Tara, Asking for uh, a friend. Uh, sometimes I'm responding in the chat because I do, even though I'm sitting there, I still, of course, you know, kind of interact with people in the chat. So it could be that. But at the same time, like when I get up in the morning, I'm like, I'm a wicked creature of habit. Like, if you know me, you can say, okay, it's 730. This is exactly what Johnny's doing. I'm a creature of habit. So every morning when I get up, one of the first things I do is I kind of go through the comments because when I wake up, there is a, just an ungodly sum of comments that are sitting there and a lot of them are, are flagged for one reason or another so i so i'm kind of just going through and handling those kind of off the so i'm multitasking bottom line it's a, a lot of speaking to just say i was multitasking tyra but thank you for the question there you have it folks he was doing everything question was tommy in the commercial too mischief managed asks indeed 100 percent. it's a really indeed fun commercial too it's a funny commercial. I can't wait to see it. When are we going to get to eat the dipping sauce? Uh, I have some, like, literally right there. Um, you can have some tomorrow. Uh, I'm see you tomorrow. Right now, just so you know, if you go to Church's Chicken, it's there right now. Um, they got, what is today? Today's the is, 13th of April, and okay, it's so yeah, Saturday. Church's is not open on Saturdays or weekends or they're open for chicken, but nobody in corporate office is working. So Monday, I'll get the green light, and they'll say, post that video, in which case you'll see it. It was fun. While we were filming, there's a, a dining room full of people, you know. When we got there, there was nobody there at all. And my contact was Joanna. So I said, is Joanna there? They said, no. It's okay. 
at two o'clock, which was the time she was supposed to be that she walks out. And just as she did, it was like they opened the door and it was like cartoon stuff. They people filed in like, like they knew a commercial was going to be made. It was pretty funny. And it's not really a commercial so much as it is just a, a video like I do on my channel. We just happen to do it in uh, the restaurant. So. Are you allowed to say which idea you went with? Uh, this one. Oh, this isn't that commercial. This is this was a commercial just for the dipping sauce. Yeah, there, I'm going to be doing some TV commercials for that. Because I remember hearing some of the wildest ideas come out of your mouth. And I was like, I can't wait to see well, it the, be real. The best thing about that is when she approached me, the person from marketing approached me. She said, do you have any really crazy uh, challenges that you want to do, but you couldn't because they were out of your range financially? I was like, so I, it was really easy to make a list. Can we get a wingsuit aisle nine? That's one of them. That's hey, one of them. I want to let you guys in on a little secret. Um, I support Uncle Johnny's wingsuit dreams. Hey, today. Don't tell the Admiral. True story. As God is my witness, I'm telling you this. We're driving today, and he, your dad looks at me and goes, do you think you can wingsuit, wingsuit off of that one right there? I said, I don't know. I don't know how <laughs> steep. He goes, how much would you need at the top before you'd have enough speed to carry? To, and I said, I, I think you need it like with, in a helicopter, a thousand feet higher and behind it. And that's how you'd want to do it but he's asking questions. You know, that's a so, good sign. So basically what you're saying is give you a little time, go to work on him. You know, he'll come around. Well, it's like the, uh, here's how I look at it. It's like the um, Grand Canyon, man. That was a river. That, that wasn't always like that. That That's over a lot of time. Erosion, just a little bit at a time, water flowing. Like how much can, damage can water do? I'm just sending him little videos during the day. I'll send him a little clip. I find these shorts of a guy like hugging a tree line and I'll send him the clip. I'm eroding him a little bit at a time. He'll tap. He's he's asking questions. It's over but the crime, yeah. dude. I see you playing the long game. Oh, it is. Yeah. But you know what? They didn't say no to every single I, I only gave them eight different ideas and every one of them they went. That was pretty I cool. mean, you're kind of a genius in my opinion. Low key. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, dude. Maybe not in the way that your daughter is, but you know what I mean? Like in your own diabolical way. She's she's a genius, man. There's no two ways about that, dude. All right, all right, all right. Let's get uh, let's get in here. Did we just do that one? We did. We yep. did that one. Both play guitar. Who are your guitar heroes? You first. Um, I would have to say uh, Sinister Gates of Avenged Sevenfold, and why can't I think of his name? Dang. I'll come back to me. I'll, I'll remember. All right. the, guitarist, the, the guitarist for All Shall Perish. I like music that's not metal, but it's just, it's like one of them's here and one of them's here. So, Are you a Slipknot guy? Yeah. Slipknot's great. Um, who are my guitar heroes? Um, I'm old, so I'm going to throw like a Jimmy Page in there. Ooh, yeah. And Love Jimmie it. Jimi Hendrix. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Well, Eddie. Modern day stuff. Paul Gilbert's amazing. Um uh, but Bumblefoot is a freak. I get all what happens with me with Bumblefoot. I'll watch one video and then four hours later, I'm still clicking videos and I'm watching. He's just a just. He gets I'll, I'll throw me. I'll throw Bumblefoot in with my favorites for sure. Easy, easy. Yeah, he's you know. Here's the funny thing: there are there are guitarists and then there are just people on a different level. You know what I mean? And I think he's just one of those guys. Here's the coolest thing though: he's like. The most normal dude, like in the world, like honest to God, he's. I, I would love to, you to meet him. He's just the coolest guy in the world, and you would never know that he's who he is. You know what I mean? I wish I had the uh, opportunity to meet him. I didn't know who they were. I ended up getting to see that show because my girlfriend at the time worked at the venue, and both of us lived next door to the venue. So I would go over there like every night for a free show, and they were freaking playing, dude. It was amazing. And not to, I might be sh telling too much, but you might get a chance of meeting him. And I'll say no more. All right. I will uh, keep my eyes wide open. Um, I, I enjoy hip hop, Tara. Um, let's do this one. I w was dreading and ex getting excited for this one when I first saw it scroll by. And the real twist gummy asks if Johnny has an embarrassing spank story. 
I don't know about embarrassing. But, you know, throwing your shoes out on the, as we're driving, and that was, I mean, it was embarrassing. It was hilarious. I don't, I don't know about embarrassing. <laughs> Well, no, you know what you would do? Like, we'd go out. If we went to a store or something, you would just take off. I mean, if you had, you quick. What about, what about your wedding? Yeah, you were crazy at the wedding. You, you, you've been crazy. Listen, you, here's the thing. To say what embarrassing. Anytime you went in public. Like, and I'm not trying oh, to mean, no. I don't mean, no. Oh, no. listen, there was a period of time. And it's like every kid goes through this. My kids did it. All right. But when you did it, it was just magnificent. <laughs> it was glorious. And when you, you would, you know, you were just fun. You were just, here's the thing. I, I, I know so many people who like parents who say they hated the terrible twos. I got news for you, man. Spanx, that was my favorite age for my kids. It was my favorite age for you because in the terrible twos, man, that's when the kids are like the kid, a kid wakes up and goes, where, he's not thinking this, but this is there's are his actions. Where's the boundary? Where's the line? I'm gonna find it today. I don't know where the line is. I'm gonna find it. And so you gotta let him find the line, but you can let him and kind of nudge him back. And every single day was you and and like when my kids were that age, and that to me was the greatest time. So even though I say the embarrassing, that was the most entertaining. Like your dad and I, we'd never have the TV on. We would just watch you. It's hilarious. You were funny. <laughs> I was entertaining uh, myself. I bet I was entertaining as hell to watch. Um, oh, you were funny. You really were. You were good for a laugh. There's no doubt about that. Lord Kiss Freak, thank you for your generosity, my guy. He says he wishes he could eat Scoville. He wishes he could eat peppers with the Scovilles. That would be very, very cool. I'd like to make that happen if I if close. I have the power. You know, if you eat Everybody who has a channel has said this. It'd be really cool if we could all just somehow get together. It's just it's an impossible thing to do, but that would be amazing. It would be. That's why pepper shows are fun. You know, even though it's not everybody, it's a chunk of them. And, you know, you have people like Jason, you know, people that walk up, you have that you've seen their names, but, or Ben, and all of a sudden they're standing in front of you. And it's like, holy moly. It's just, that's a very, very cool thing. Crazy girl, where's my plant, Spanx? I did not make it out of the house at all today, um, other than going uh, to check the mailbox. So it's coming, I promise. Uh, I was just getting all kinds of LIFO stuff done today. And then I had that emotional moment in the comments, and I just was like, I'm not going to the store. I'm just going to cry and answer comments and stuff. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't find the end of the comments. It was like a little overwhelming for a second. Not like a bad cry. I was like giggling and crying at the same time. It was like, is this real? Anyways. Let's not focus on that at all. Um, Sp <laughs> Spanx, do you spin regular poi? Asks Debbie P. I do not. I used to have a pair of practice poi, and I would keep them around because I figured, you know, one day I'll, you know, pick them up and play and I'll learn. I never did, so I ended up giving them to someone that, that would. Lisa Trimble, good to see you. I didn't see you until just now. Question, Johnny, what made you choose to get sober? Great question. Okay. I had enough. I had enough. You know what? And being a YouTuber, just you're, there's no shackles. You know what I mean? There's, there's, you know, if you have a regular, like all my life, I had a Joe job, a regular job where I had bosses in the, in the building or wherever I went. And there were, there was so much structure. You know what I mean? And when you're a YouTuber and you're just like, it was at a time where I was like in a different country every month or a different state every month, a different show. And I kind of, you know, it just got too much. And I knew if I didn't, it was going to be, a, a, it was, it was already a problem, but if I didn't, it was going to be a lot worse. And I just decided I had enough. I just, it wasn't like a, an amazing cataclysmic event the night before that, where I had an aha moment. I just woke up and just decided I wasn't going to do it anymore. Dude, I'm so grateful that I got sober. I, uh, there's no way I would, I mean, uh, there's, I don't think I could have been successful at anything, smoking crack and, and, and getting drunk all, you know, but, but uh, I'm proud. I, of I, I wouldn't have been able to do this. That's for damn sure. I don't think I would have been able to really do anything, but especially no, not this. No, you spend your day worried about your habit. You can't yeah, do that's anything. Right. That's I right. Know. I don't know exactly what you mean, but if you think about when I got sober five years ago, if you think of what's happened to my channel since since the five years since all I stopped, the best, all the best things. 
<laughs> crazy <laughs> stuff and it's all literally accidental i mean i didn't you know i didn't do anything it just kind of happened so i'm very grateful for being sober you know yeah and the other thing that's really important this is kind of cool we were talking about the other day i was you know the ants like when i first got sober the ants were vicious the automatic negative thoughts they'd be like how much time I wasted, how many relationships I destroyed, how much money I wasted. Forget the money, the time and, and the relationships. Those, you know, I would hear them over and over again. After being sober, like five years now, that doesn't, I, I don't hear those ads st- don't happen. The disease is insidious, those. man. The things that my brain will tell me are just horrible, horrible things. But your brain's not your friend, man. And that's, you know, I, that's, that's a, to me, it was a huge moment, like an aha moment where I realized that my, not only is my brain, I, am I not my brain and my brain is not my friend. My brain is just, just the path of least resistance. Nothing good comes from the path of least resistance, period. The hardest things are the, you know, the, the greatest achievements are the ones that are the hardest to achieve. You, that doesn't happen with the path of least resistance. You know what I mean? I was just, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for sobriety. Me too. I know I'm going out of order, but this one was right in front of my mouse. So I clicked Janet G. Thank you so much. Can we all please send love and ones to Aria and his wife? May they stay safe during this hard time. Love from Canada. For those of y'all wondering, um, our friend Aria and his family are live in Israel. Yeah. And you're going to see a couple different lifeboats. That's because Spanx and I are the same thing. When we were talking about it as we were typing, and for some reason I had it in my head that he was on Chase the Heat and it was going to come up like both of us ganging up, but it's not how it happened at all. Just stacking them one after the other. Yeah, just all the support. (laughs) All right. right. Where were we? We were... Seventh Son says, Plant Freak, Valerie, and Brazy Girl make good mods. Must have heard I was structuring... Thank you, Seventh. I appreciate you. And Brazy Girl says, thank you. Hugs and kisses. Sweet. Well, that's um, what I had starred. Um, I'm sure that there's some more stuff that I didn't click on because we got pretty into it. But I don't think I've ever asked you this. Um, What's your dream automobile? Boy, you know, it's changed so much over, over the years. Like when I was 18... It would have been a Lamborghini. You know what I mean? Me too. Me too. Kuntash. The El Diablo. It would, it would have been, yeah. That, or, that it's kind of changed over time. I, you know, the event. I don't know. You know, I, 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 if I had a billion dollars, I'm not sure I'd run out and buy a car tomorrow. I, you, you get to a place where you realize that the most important things in life aren't things. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I tell you what. A Beck Spider, which is a copy of the uh, Porsche 550 Spider that, that James Dean died in. That's about the coolest looking to me. It's not fast. It doesn't handle particularly. I mean, com- compared to stuff today. But to me, that's about the coolest looking thing. But still, I don't know. Man. I mean, cars are kind of, I've gone through the phase. You know what I mean? I've had really nice cars. I've had Italian. I've had German. I don't know. I'm more of a guitar. I mean, you know what? I'm really into my guitars. I didn't tell you what I did, Spanx. So I tell had, I, well, I got two guitars that are very similar, the Strandberg and the, the uh, GOC, and they both needed, that's 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 my dream car. Beck Spider, that. everyone. Beck Spider. You look at that thing. Just look that, at it. Would you just look at is. it? How pretty that is. Can you see me in that thing? Be real. Come on now. Yeah, I, I could see me in there too, you know, right next to you, hanging out. So I, I did a deep dive on my guitars because I needed a, a, a setup on both of them, one far more than the other. The intonation on the, one of them was horrible. And I... Where, where do you go out here? Well, I, before I forget. I, I do it myself now. I figured it out. My guitars are butter, dude. You have no idea. I've got okay. the, the... The setup is perfect. The... the uh, Wait till you see it. Here's the problem. I've had like, well, it's the reason it's easy is because they're headless and they're a joke. Oh. You can you can fix okay. them. It took me once I figured out how to do it. It took all of twenty minutes. Wow! I would okay. have taken it to a guitar shop. They were going to charge me 125 bucks a guitar. The problem wow. is, I never was able. I can fix the intonation. Like uh, you have. Oh wait, you have a uh, Floyd Rose, don't you? 
I do, and I need a bar for it. Um, for some reason, it didn't come with a bar. Very you guys easy want to get. see. The problem though is going to be I like I have no idea how to do the setups on those. Would you change? Have you changed the strings on those? No, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm going to pay someone to do it. I'm not. I'm not messing around. I'm not going to fafo if you know what I mean. You know. Yeah. Floyd Rose though, you can flog those things, man. There, Jerry it's pretty Fowler sweet. Needs a bar too. Uh, Sweet Tea says I need to tie my hair up and wear a hat to ride in that convertible. I could just go in there and get some wings, you know. Um, Fool around and find out, Tara smiling. I'm being nice with a fool around. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping it family friendly, people. What was the worst concert you ever went to? Um, I've been to a few dead shows that were horrible. Um, I guess that's an easy answer, though, huh? Yeah, I've been to a couple of bad ones. Here's the thing, you know what? Even when they're bad, I'm just happy to be the, for the experience. So, I don't think I've ever had a couple, you know, really bad. I had a couple in, at UVM where I went to college. I had a couple in the rain that were nightmarish. Yeah. It started pouring, and we're at a field with like 500 people. It just ends up getting really crazy, but. Oh, every even like when the music's bad, it's still live music, you know. I'm trying to think of like my answer to that question, I'm having a hard time. You know, I don't know if I've been in like a rainy, wet, terrible kind of situation concert, but I have been. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Gnarly concert. Cool. It wasn't a bad concert. It was just a, just a no good concert. Oh, I got knocked out in a mosh pit. Mosh that was pit. probably that was probably my worst concert. It was my favorite metal band of all time. Two songs in, I just like woke up on the ground and my eyebrow ring was not attached to my head anymore. And I did not oh, want wow. to be there anymore either. So I like got up and like kind of considered for maybe 30 seconds and then I left the venue. I just left. Were you pretty concussed? Oh, yeah. For Here's sure. what I don't understand about a mosh pit. Maybe it's, I shouldn't even say anything because it's like, get off my porch, that kind of, you know, that kind of thing, get off my lawn or whatever. But to me, a mosh pit, it's like, I, you know. I mean, uh, what happened to me that night was not an accident. Um, no, I somebody teed you up. Somebody punched somebody, you. Somebody, yeah, some, like intentionally. Like it was, they weren't slam dancing. Someone sucker punched me in the side of the head, guaranteed. Someone was mad or I stepped on someone's shoe or, I, I was a little drunk, so who knows what, you know, I don't think I was being rude to anybody, but I, I definitely, uh, I probably didn't have great balance. So maybe someone got a little irritated and just teed me up. Shannon Smith, when Pink Floyd in the rain, I saw Pink Floyd in the rain. And you know what? When you see lasers in the rain, it makes it look like the rain is going up and not down. It's the most bizarre Which is thing in the whole world. Pretty cool. It's really huh? odd to see because you so it depends on what country you are, what phase of life you're in. It may not be very intense, but it may be the weirdest thing you've ever seen in your life. It was kind of like that. I'm so glad that you rewrote this. I saw this earlier and missed the star, and I'm sorry that you had to rewrite that, but thank you. Question Have you watched, listened to Justin Johnson? He makes guitars out of things you would not think of, and he is awesome to watch. He plays blues. I have, I have not heard of this. I okay. Have. He's okay. good, but what he makes guitars out of is amazing. I will say I have seen um, some pretty legendary bucket drummers. When I was homeless in Fort Collins, um, I would hang out downtown with, you know, the street, the street ruffians and, you know, the, uh, I believe in Aladdin, they called them, uh, uh, I don't know, I forget. Anyways, uh, there was a guy I ran into, his name was Lance. And uh, he was the most legendary bucket drummer of all time. Like he would have given Neil Peart a run for his money. No joke. Um, wow. This guy and was there's some street in, musicians that are just unbelievable. And that was just the life he wanted to live. You know, he was out there just kind of traveling and partying and playing music and just being out there for the sake of being out there. You know, um, it was a very interesting individual. Um, I think it takes a very special mindset to be able to succeed in, in, not only succeed, but like flourish in that kind of environment. Right. You know what? And in any environment, you know, the fight doesn't ever stop. There's not a whole lot of 
environments that you wouldn't consider harsh these days when you when you consider social economic all kinds of different factors we're definitely in a strange time that's for sure yeah i don't think i've ever been in a mosh pit to be honest with you you're not missing much i'm not a mosh pit kind of guy it's you a young why? man's game here's the deal i get i i don't like big crowds i don't know if your dad's right i have a problem with big crowds and here's i'm why. right there with you for sure <laughs> I, like like Mardi Gras or like Times Square on uh, uh, New Year's? Look, you, I'd rather gargle gas in me than go to Times Square on New Year's. Forget it. Uh, gargle gas gonna would be not a, be that bad. Oh, compared. there's going to be a melee, and I'm going to get sucked into it. And that's what I every you know every time there's a fight, somehow I'm I'm trying to get away from it, and I get pulled into the melee. And I, I, I you know I'm done fighting. I've fought enough. I don't want to fight anymore. You just you deserve a rest. You've earned it. So, hey, I've been good. I haven't I haven't been in a fight in a long time. I have the last fight that I was in on video. I'll have to show you. Oh, I would love to see uh, Uncle Johnny getting a little scuffle. <laughs> it was crazy. My side, this guy told me he was going to come to my house and try to my apartment and try to beat me up. He was my neighbor. I was talking on the phone with Foy, my business partner. And I I said, this dude's coming over in my apartment. So we have to go to Foy? I was on the phone. I was talking to Foy on the phone, and so the the, the guy comes over and he, bang, he I hear the bang on the door, and he goes, "Is that him?" I said, "Yeah, I'll call you back." So I have the phone. I said, "My son," I said, "Turn, film this." I, he goes, "Why?" I said, "This is it's Exhibit A. I'm not starting this, but I'm gonna handle it. Film it." So he, I opened the door, and this guy's name was Steve. He hit me right here in the jaw, and he had his car keys in his hand. And it was a stupid me. guy. Yeah, I didn't even realize it in the moment. You know, when fights happen, I was bleeding, didn't even know it. But I, I, yeah, that was the last one. It's pretty funny. Did you? Uh, I did him way better it? than I did way better than he did. Yeah, I, you know, and listen, I don't like fighting, but he hit me first, and he came over to my apartment. But I got him right here, really hard, and he did the chicken dance. He couldn't, he couldn't. Oh walk. no! He was trying to get <laughs> made to get out his feet, and he couldn't. Hate he, to see he wasn't it. smart enough to say. I'm in trouble here. I should leave. And he kept coming towards me, which was a horrible idea because he couldn't defend himself at that point. And I was angry. So anyway, but Game anyway, few. All I'm right. very, I'm a lover, wicked lover. So not a fighter. Seriously. I'm not a fighter. I have watched the who, and I almost had tickets with uh, my fire crew at one point to go see him. Uh, but we did not uh, end up going. Mongolian folk metal band. I can't Dude, tell you how badly I want to hear that. You have to. You want it, We can do it right now. And do that, rawr, rawr, that throat stuff. Yeah, I know what you're yep. talking about. Yeah, isn't that I'll, cool? I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you a picture of them. We'll, we probably don't want to demonetize, but this band is so we cool. Definitely don't want to demonetize. They but are. I know exactly so cool. what you're talking about. That throat thing going on. Yeah, these guys are legit. <laughs> Look at this image. All right, here. This is so much fun, isn't it? Probably going to leave you on this note. I think we're gonna gonna wrap it up here. Yeah. Look at that. Wow! I gotta hear that. But I did just see this excellent question. It just happened to be right in my face. We're gonna do this one, and then we're gonna go. Or well, I'm going to go. You guys can hang out with Uncle Johnny if that's what he wants to do. But Tara Smiling asks, if you could change one thing in your life today with the snap of a finger, what would it be? And I have to say, um, if I could change one thing with the snap of the fingers, I would probably go back to a point in my life where, uh, where I could have chased my music dreams. Like the, the, po the point at which it, it would have been optimal to move in that direction. I'd go back to that moment and then do it. What about you, Uncle Johnny? Go, I would not go back in time at all. It's all been too painful. I wouldn't want to do any of it over again. But what I, I would I'd do definitely is go. I would just change where I'm at and I would blink and I'd open my eyes and I'd be in Australia right now. Oh wow. I love that. It's coming. It's I coming. Love that. Yep. Hey, thank you everybody who came. Spanks, you're an awesome captain. Can I tell you that? You captain thank you. a great boat. Hey, I have a quick question before we hang up. You're on a cruise ship, okay. one of those big numbers. Somebody falls off the boat. Do you realize how long does it take before that boat can circle around and come get them? 
uh, the, can they even do that? Oh yeah, they can. Now it's going to take you like six hours though, long enough for them to drown. I would imagine. Couple. Even if they said, all right, Spanx just hit the water and they turn that thing around, it's going to be a couple miles and several hours. And, yeah. You know, I hope you got a uh, life raft, but you're a great captain. I'm proud of you. I love you. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. And thank Come you for see. everybody who came. Seriously. Thanks for everybody who uh, was here. And we didn't say your name. I apologize, but I love you guys. Stay strong. You gave me some, some things to think about with that, <laughs> with that cruise ship thing. Um, yeah. And I agree. Love you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, and we'll do it again soon. All right. Um, Absolutely. Hit that like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. And if you'd like to stay subscribed and not get automatically unsubscribed by some mystery YouTube algorithm, hit the all under the bell for notifications. I hear that fixes the problem. Uh, um, you guys are all rock stars and I look forward to seeing you in the morning. All right. Cheers. Cheers.